Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally like to talk a load of bollocks. So we'll talk gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a game that we reviewed a few years ago. And we've recently sort of started playing it a little bit more. And we just wanted to revisit this game and tell you why we love this game so much. The game is Seven Wonders. It's a game designed by the French geezer Antoine Bowser in 2011. It's a card drafting civilization building game that plays up to seven slash eight people and plays in about 30 minutes. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button subscribe and all that bullshit see you after this bollocks so seven wonders how do you play this game so seven wonders is a card drafting game the game takes place over three ages you're gonna have age one you have age two yeah, you can have age three ain't you? so what you're gonna do you're gonna deal each player seven cards and you'll choose a card and you'll put it in front of you and then once everybody's chosen their cards you'll reveal all the cards right and then once everybody has revealed you'll take an action you can either build the card you'll pay the cost if there is one in the top right hand corner and it will give you a benefit it might be a construction card in which case it will give you a load of resources like brick glass cloth wood or and all that sort of shit or it might be a yellow commerce card which might give you a discount or some cash or some end of game final scoring benefit it might be a blue card which is straight up victory points it might be a green card that has some science symbols on it this is like a set collection figure if you get a set of all three symbols you'll get seven points and for every single symbol you will get that many victory points squared so if you've got say four tablets then you'll get four squared which is like 16 points and then there's purple guild cards which give you a end of game scoring benefit right so we do everyone will reveal it you'll usually build the card but you've also got the option of building a stage of your wonder you won't reveal the card but you'll slot it underneath your wonder board in one of the three slots or two depending on which wonder you have chosen you'll be able to pay the cost of that stage and the wonder will give you a benefit it might be different victory points it might allow you to construct a card for free right you can also trash the card and get three points at the end of each age you'll have a, a bit of a military tear up right you'll compare military strength which are the red cards whoever's got the most military strength between you and your two opponents that are adjacent to you, then you'll score a certain amount of victory points but if you lose you'll get some negative victory points you'll do this three times and then you'll go through a score sheet thing and then the player with the most victory points be the winner of seven wonders so seven wonders what do we like about this game so the first thing that we like about Seven Wonders is that it's shorter than David Rapport's Underpants. It plays in about 30 minutes and this means you're not going to get bored off your tits playing it. Like a lot of these types of Euro games can sort of drag on just that little bit too much yeah. But once you get over the mind numbing iconography then you can burn through this in about 30 to 40 minutes. New players are going to struggle with this because where it's all icon based it can be a little bit overwhelming yeah. But once you go over that hurdle you are going to storm through this game like a giant looking for that last suppository so the second thing that we really like about this is it's a euro game that plays up to seven players or eight if you have one of the expansions there's not that many games out there that play up to seven players without dragging on and on and on and it doesn't really matter how many players are playing this game you can play it with three four five or six and it doesn't seem to impact the game length or its complexity at all where you'll be revealing your cards and acting in unison and maybe just telling your opponents either side of you what you're doing you don't really have to go around the table and announce to everybody what your intentions are so the fact that a this is 30 minutes long and could play a seven player game in that time frame means that this game is quite unique right so the third thing that we really like about this is it really does feel like you are building a mini empire with a few cards right if you've got the expansions there's loads of different wonders you've got the lighthouse of alexandria you've got the mausoleum of halicarnassus you've got the colossus of Rhodes. you've even got stone henge the pyramids gazer and the way that you've got all the different traditional facets of building a civilization means it really does feel like you're actually doing that, right? You've got the science aspect of ancient civilizations. You're going to have to get resources to build your wonder. You've got the commerce aspect of this where trade was so important in the ancient world, right? So the way that Antoine Bowser's made you feel like you're actually constructing something just out of a few decks of cards, it's a phenomenal achievement, right? So the fourth thing that we really like about this is that there's loads of different paths 
to victory. Like we just said, you might want to take the science aspect. There's loads and loads of lucrative ways of getting points by concentrating on science. You might want to concentrate on a military victory. You might think you're a bit of an hard and you might want to give your opponents a slap after each age. You might want to just double down on the blue victory point cards. We played this the other day and my wife did just that and she handed our asses to us on a silver platter. And then there are the guild cards up here in the third age. These are secretly shuffled into the deck so you don't really know what is going to come out. So this game really is the perfect blend of skill and luck. It's taking a big mishmash of randomness and trying to fashion some kind of coherent strategy and well-oiled engine out of fuck all. So the final thing that we really like about 7 is and probably the main reason why I'm still playing this day is because of the wealth of expansions that have been released to date. You've got the 7 Wonders Leaders expansion which gives you a character card that's going to give you a special ability that is probably going to guide your strategy as you're playing a game. You've got this Cities expansion which adds a little bit of skullduggery and intrigue to the game because it allows you to stitch up your opponent with negative victory point chits, right? Then you've got the Babel expansion which adds a sideboard. Then you've got the Armada expansion which takes Seven Wonders out onto the high seas and there's all sorts of promo cards. There's a couple of small anniversary packs that adds extra stuff to the leaders and the Cities expansions. They did release a, in my opinion, a pointless refresh of this, a second edition. And that meant that all the first edition content was no longer compatible with the second edition, which is a real kick in the teeth for people that own the first edition and are looking for some of the expansions. Because say, if you've got the first edition core set and you're looking for the Armada expansion, the first edition Armada is now way out of print and you can't use the second edition Armada because the card backs are different, right? So that is a pain in the ass. But at the end of the day, the amount of content that exists for Seven Wonders is, is astronomical. You've even got the Seven Wonders Dual spin-off game that was designed with assistance from Bruno Kafala, and then you've got the latest Architects game that I haven't played, but I've heard that it's probably a bit light and there's not really that much game there, but I can't speak for that because I haven't actually played it. So yeah, the amount of content that's available for this, it means you're never ever going to be playing the same game twice, right? So there you go, that is why we still adore Seven Wonders. It's still one of our favourite games of all time, and I can't see that changing any time soon. Tell us in the comments below if you agree with our exaltation of this seminal classic. Has it been surpassed by other tableau building games, maybe like Everdell or other games of that ilk? Have a tear up in the comments below, hit the like button, subscribe, and all that YouTube bullshit. See you next time.